Hello nurses, this is Kevin with nursingcamp.com and I'm, these are my scribble notes on nursing and the NCLEX. Today's focus is going to be on acute medications like heparin versus Coumadin. For my sticky note, heparin versus Coumadin could be found on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, also on my site nursingcamp.com. Okay, let's get going. All right, so let's talk about heparin first. Heparin first is an acute medication. It's part of the uh, cardiac ABCs, Ds, C, C, D, Es. And what I'm talking about is it's up here in there. And it's part of the uh, hand's own name. This is the H. And heparin is acute because of it's given for patients who are at risk for clots. Like patients who have uh, AFib, there's no P wave. So there's no P wave before. Or they have a flutter. You see these cutter waves, flutter, cutter, kind of like a saw upside down. Um, also, patients are post MI, acute MI, um, and patients who are at risk for any kinds of clots like PEs, D, DVTs, and so on. All right, so let's talk a little bit about what it, do, what it does. So heparin is a... Um, is a uh, intrinsic factor um, med. And what it works on is it works on a clotting cascade um, and there's an extrinsic versus an intrinsic side. And that's not really that important, but it's mainly inside. And inside is more acute. So it is an acute med. All right, so let's talk about um, what's specific about heparin. So when heparin is given, um, you always need two lines with heparin. And the reason you need two lines is because you need might need an antidote. And that antidote for heparin is uh, protamine sulfate. And when we're looking at this, this is called a coagulation fish bone. And that's the PT is there. Uh, the PTT is there. And then INR is there. What we're talking about is this PTT, and this kind of looks like an H, and that for heparin. So that's what we monitor. All right, let's get rid of the sticky note. You can get it down on nursingcamp.com. All right, so <clears throat> let's go into this coagulation fishbone. So this is the way I look at labs, and this is the way that you can look at labs, and um, it's this coag fishbone, this PT, and then PTT, I and R. This TT, okay, so um, the, the levels, let's talk about this. So P10, I always think of this as P10, okay? I don't know why, I just do, and that equals 10. And then it's three Ts, one, two, and three. So 10 plus three is 13, and that's 10 to 13 seconds for the PT, all right? And then the PTT, this is the way I do that. I, I write one. I write two, and then I write three. And I put a five there, I put a five there, and I put a five there, okay? So a normal PTT is 25 to 35 seconds. Okay, all right, so this is how it works. So when a person gets put on heparin, a heparin drip, what the first thing is we do, we do a baseline PTT. And we want to see what that is. It wants to be 25 to 35. That's called baseline. So if you have a baseline PTT of 25 seconds, we're going to put them on this drip, and they're at risk for bleeding, okay, because this is going to affect the clotting cascade, which I talked about earlier. And that bleeding is what we're going to monitor for. We're going to monitor for heparin-induced thrombocytopenia bleeding is acute. But this bleeding we'll monitor because we're going to monitor this PTT. We're going to start to raise this PTT so it takes longer to get a clot. All right, so the, the, the therapeutic nature of this is we want to increase this PTT. So how much do we increase it by? Well, as you saw, I wrote 1525. What I do is I go here. And we want it one and a half times to two 
times the normal PT. So for example, we just said that person had a 25 PTT. So I need it to be either two times or one and a half to two times. So one and a half to two times would be, you know, um, 40. Okay. Or if it's two times, it's 50. Okay. If it's greater than two times, like if it's 55, I start to wonder, are they starting to bleed? And I start to monitor for them bleeding. And that is problematic. So that makes that patient acute. So the PTT is monitored by, um, and what we'll do is we'll get that baseline, then we'll recheck it to make sure that it's one and a half to two times the normal. Um, if it's greater than the two times the normal, um, we will call the doctor and then we will question that medication. And then we might think about um, protamine sulfate, okay? But um, you would always stop the heparin drip. Um, if you questioning that patient is bleeding. So that heparin drip gets a baseline, that baseline then gets rechecked, and then based on what that baseline is, what that new level is, that PTT, um, based on that, whatever it is, um, you will either raise the heparin drip or lower the heparin drip. Now that's heparin drips, there's also heparin sub-Q, okay? And subcutaneous heparin, is different in the sense that it's given sub Q. It's also, um, you can call it Lovenox, okay? And we never massage Lovenox sites, right? So, um, and heparin, given sub Q, and preferably in the abdomen, away from the umbilicus. Um, the thing about that is you don't have to monitor a PTT with heparin because it's, um, it's not a drip. Okay. The next thing is, is that um, we're going to cover is Coumadin with the next lecture. We'll cover that separately. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about heparin and um, some things that you need to know. We worry about heparin with um, uh, peptic ulcers, people who are bleeding, hemophiliacs, and post-op surgical. Remember, there is a difference between... Um, uh, IV heparin, because IV heparin is going to be PTT and sub-Q heparin. We monitor the stools uh, for bleeding, um, hematopoiesis, and then uh, hematuria bleeding. Those are all complications, means stop the heparin, think about the antidote, protamine sulfate. Okay. Remember, heparin does not break up clots. It doesn't break them up, but it prevents them from forming. So let's do a quick a whales on it. Whoops, and we kind of slid open here. Okay, there you go. A quick a whales on this. Okay, so a uh, w h a a l. This is a Q. It's a Q. Uh, how does it work? It works in the clotting cascade. Um, when do you hold it? When the PTT is greater than two times the heparin. Um, and we also, uh, if we see signs and symptoms of bleeding. Assessment is for signs and symptoms of bleeding. Um, labs associated with it is the PTT, and that should be 25 to 35 seconds. Uh, eating, do we any worry anything about that? Nope. And then stands out. Well, it stands out that it's an acute medication that you need to monitor the PTT. Um, there is sub-Q as well as uh, IV medications. However, um, drips are more Q, and we always monitor for bleeding and their PTT. Uh, the, the thing is about they can't go home on heparin, okay? So and that leads into that next question of what do they go on, and that's called Coumadin. There's also Eloquist, but we'll talk about that with our Coumadin lecture. All right, my name is Camp, and this is Nursing Camp. You can follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest is where you can get this sticky note. You can also get the book on um, Etsy, and also I give it away free with uh, Nursing Camp. And I'm also on Twitter. So that's about it. We'll see you next time on my Coumadin lecture. And so nurse on, and we'll talk to you soon.